Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Daniel Ball and you're watching the first video in a whole series I'm doing on the Cisco Meeting Server. Now this is uh, just kind of a broad overview of what I'm planning for the series, uh, which I've split up into two different modules, as you can see here. The first module uh, dealing with uh, CMS basic deployment and of course the second on advanced deployment. For the first module, I've got uh, five lessons planned, and it looks like a total of six different labs. And uh, pretty much the same thing for the second module, five lessons with uh, six labs total. And of course, I'll uh, record all the labs and walkthroughs that I do here. Those will be part of the series as well, and I'll upload those as well. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started with lesson one, what is CMS? Okay, so for some time, Cisco's uh, message, Cisco's direction has been cloud first, but not necessarily cloud only, uh, because although in much of the world there is a uh, high demand for cloud solutions, you know, that's definitely true, uh, there is still a case for an on-premise conferencing solution, and many companies and institutions continue to use this solution today. Now, uh, Cisco has, or should I say had, uh, three different uh, conferencing uh, platforms. I say had here because uh, you could argue that it's now only two platforms because WebEx has been kind of unified recently. Uh, so, so now it's just WebEx. But, but anyway, setting that distinction aside, um, we can say that the idea behind you know, the larger WebEx platform is that you have this messaging platform that you could scale up to a meeting quickly and easily. So for example, if I'm in a space instant messaging with uh, one or more people, I could launch that space into a meeting just with the click of a button and uh, all the other participants could join in. And so, you know, that's one way of doing meetings. And of course, there's uh, the scheduled meeting uh, version of that scenario as well. But the point about the WebEx platform, you know, largely speaking, is that it's based in the cloud, right? Uh, but then you have uh, the Cisco Meeting Server, which is an on-premise solution and uh, is, of course, where our focus is going to be for the duration of this video series. So with CMS, you know, you can use Jabber or Cisco's video endpoints or, or even other applications to join into these meetings. But because CMS is an on-premise solution, it's hosted in your environment, and uh, that means you're in control of the infrastructure and you're in control of the security, which is really important for some organizations. And so that's one of the main reasons why this on-premise solution is still in demand. So Cisco's committed to uh, bringing premise-based uh, video, audio, and uh, web communication together to meet the collaboration needs of the modern workplace. And as I alluded to, uh, it, it'll work with uh, third-party devices. So for example, you, know, you could use uh, Cisco's endpoints, but you could also use, say, Polycom devices. Or uh, soft clients work with it, and uh, web clients work as well. Okay, now in terms of the platforms that you can use to deploy CMS, uh, right now you have three main choices. Now, the 2000 servers, these are bare metal installations. However, uh, the 1000 appliance server and the third, par uh, third party server, these both support virtual installations running VMware ESXi, okay? Now, CMS also supports a consistent one meeting experience by preserving the end user experience uh, no matter what device is used to connect to the meeting. There's also interoperability with uh, WebRTC. Uh, now this, by the way, uh, this lets users connect to a meeting by opening a web browser, say uh, you know, Chrome or Firefox. And so if you have uh, a camera, a microphone, speaker, and display, then you can, of course, enjoy full 1080p video, premium audio, and two-way content sharing, you know, all through a web browser. And also high scalability is offered in both the appliance and virtual deployment platforms. Uh, and so you can cluster multiple Cisco meeting servers together, and then this will give you resiliency, scalability, and efficiency. 
Okay, now let's talk about the different uh, deployment models. So as of uh, CMS version 3.0 or later, there are two different deployment models. The first of these is the single combined server deployment. Now, uh, this uses a single CMS with all the necessary services running on the same server. Okay, so uh, with this model, it's, uh, it's, sim it's a simple solution to deploy. It's a simple solution to support. But the problem is that it offers no resiliency or scalability. Okay. So the alternative solution is the scaled and resilient deployment model. Now this solution uh, can also be applied to a group of three or more Cisco meeting servers and uh, common core components can be configured on multiple servers uh, or on separate servers. Okay, so uh, the way scalability and redundancy can be achieved here is through clustering certain key CMS services, uh, which we're going to talk a, a little bit more about a little bit later. Okay. Okay, as of CMS version 3.0 and later, there are four different services that can be activated on CMS. The CallBridge service is the primary service on a CMS deployment. Now, this service is used to manage all call loads. Okay, so Ideally, uh, all the media for calls to a conference should reside on the same call bridge uh, if users are in the same location and if uh, the required call capacity exists. Okay. Now, when users are in multiple locations, then ideally one call bridge per location should be used. Okay, now if you plan to use the web app, and uh, by the way, if you don't know what that is, uh, the CMS web app is the replacement product for the old Cisco meeting app. And uh, again, I'll, I'll talk more about that later. Uh, in fact, I think we're gonna be doing a lab with that as well. But uh, in any, at any rate, uh, if you plan to use this, uh, then you'll need to enable and configure the WebBridge 3 service, okay? And uh, it doesn't require an activation key, but it does require an enabled call bridge. Again, we'll dive into that a little bit more later. Now, uh, the Cisco meeting server also includes a recording and streaming facility. And this component does require a separate license key to be installed uh, in order to activate it. Now, just kind of an aside here, if, if you wanted to simply evaluate some of the features and kind of give it a test drive, then you could go ahead and enable the recorder and streamer on the same server as the call bridge. But for normal deployment, uh, it needs to be enabled on a separate server, separate from the call bridge, okay? And either way, uh, if you intend to deploy the recorder and streamer on the same Cisco meeting server, then you'll need to make sure that you size the server appropriately for both uses. Finally, there's a database service. Now, all information on the CMS is, of course, stored in a database, true, but this isn't the same component as the database service. The database service is used in scalable and resilient deployments so that data can be replicated between peers within a cluster. Okay, So basically, you'll only need to activate and configure it when clustering CMSs, but you won't need it for a single combined server deployment. Okay, And there used to be a lot of other services that existed prior to CMS version 3.0, as you can see from this list here, but Cisco has really focused on streamlining the server through the last several revisions of the core software. Uh, even so, all of the services here uh, that were removed can still be leveraged in a CMS solution through the Expressway Core and Edge. Okay? All right, that is a brief introduction into CMS. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to see what's new in CMS. I know I've uh, already touched on a few of those items already, but we're going to take a closer look uh, at a lot of new and uh, really cool features. So I hope you'll stick around for the next lesson. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and release that, uh, that next video uh, in the next few days. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.